Hi folks, in this 10 minute tactic, I am going to tell you how to solve the age old issue with organizations and that is like silos. What is a silo? Well, silo is basically a department or something, some sort of uh, part within the organization or parts that have a very strong chain of command, if you will, both you know in terms of authority and communication. So we have multiple Kind of departments or silos exactly as, as you would envision well I have a solution for that and that's what I'm going to talk to you about it is simple but not easy just like all things leadership it's called the cross-functional communication and collaboration meeting what the heck is that all right the cross-functional communication collaboration meeting CFC C <laughs> so what is it well first of all let's talk about why it's important like why siloing happens and then we'll get into the silo busting part of it here shortly everybody like as organizations are stood up and as they develop they are very very strongly aligned with their own hierarchy their own chain of command for a good reason a lot of times because you have to have a clear chain up and down within that particular department and that functional area so it's actually very very normal and natural for that to happen and i see it in emergency management i see it in the response i'm on right now uh incident management i've, I've spent a lot of time in siloed organizations now a couple of key points one of which why does it happen as i said just Organizationally, we continually reinforce that just through emails and, and how we make decisions. But also sometimes, and this is where my, my solution comes in. Well, actually, never mind sometimes, all the time, people want to do a good job. Eh, 99% of people. Good point. And so they end up working in silos, not because they want to, but because they actually feel that they're kind of stuck there. And we see this bumping in silo to silo all the time. And really, so, so what kind of symptoms do you start to see? You start to see some frustration. You start to see meetings happen within silos, uh, within themselves, complaining about the other department, the other area. Uh, you see issues being escalated up to the top of that silo, over to the next one, and then down, and, and all sorts of things like that. So there's myriad of other things that, that you'll see, but so that's one of the things that, 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 that you'll see and, and, uh, and it builds a lot of frustration. Really, what you're trying to do though is, is, is you're trying to, to work through, work around that whole silo issue because you can't necessarily fix that as the leader. So what you have to do is you have to dance with who brung you and figure out a solution to work with the reality that you're faced with. That's leadership, right? So that's where the cross-functional collaboration and communication meeting uh, comes in, AKA, I call it the silo buster. So what you do is you get the, the functional elements that you need to do your job. So let's say it's uh, HR, it's OH&S, for example, it's uh, legal. Uh, legal and privacy, it's operations, it's planning and development, whoever you need within a particular organization. And here's the thing, and it's not hard to do. You reach out to them and you bring them in to a regular silo busting meeting. And what happens at the silo busting meeting? Well, the first thing you have to decide is what are our rules of engagement? What are the roles and responsibilities of each of those functional areas? Who has authority? to make the decisions and the final decisions. Who represents the different silos uh, at what levels? Those, those kinds of things. And also making sure that the CFCC, the, the, the silo buster, has a standing agenda and is a standing meeting based on whatever schedule you want. And it is imperative that people come to those meetings and as the facilitator, as the leader, of these silo busting meetings you make sure that everyone has a voice that needs that voice a lot of times people when i've started to implement it people from the different areas are like oh my gosh thank you i've been trying to reach out to blah 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 in your area all the whole time or i'm so overworked because we're micromanaging 
down and across and all this other stuff. And so what we can do is we can leverage each other's strengths and areas and expertise and collaborate and communicate. And all you have to do as a leader is just set that meeting up, come up with the rules of engagement, commit to it. It's really, really important and it works really, really well. Have the key people in those meetings collaborate and communicate. And then each silo, each person representing the different functional areas, the expectation around rules of engagement is that they will go and they will communicate within their silo and leverage the expertise within their areas as needed. And it works like a freaking charm and the relief is palpable when people join these meetings. And, and then you really start to be build a, a, a strong team regardless of organizational kind of elements. You're, you're, you're working around that because part of leadership, as I said earlier, is about dancing with who brung you. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, you would love to change the organization, but sometimes you're dealing with 50 years of tradition, not impeded by progress. So it's the cross-functional, collaboration communication meeting otherwise called a silo buster i i can't stress enough how important that is and 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 i encourage you and i recommend that you you start doing that thanks for your time